Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you to a place where I haven't covered true crime before. So far in this series, I've covered stories from England, Scotland, America and Canada. However, I want to cover a story which I discovered when looking for cases outside these areas. A case which I found to be disturbing to the core. One where there would be a two and a half year manhunt for the perpetrator. Today, I'll be telling you about the case of Lindsay Hawker and how a promising young woman with an overwhelming sense of trust for others came to a tragic end after leaving England to teach English in Japan. Let's begin. Lindsay Hawker was born on the 30th of December 1984 in Coventry to parents Bill and Julia Hawker. She was the youngest of three siblings. She grew up in Brandon, Warwickshire, and attended King Henry VIII School in Coventry. She went on to study biology at the University of Leeds, where she would graduate with a first-class honours degree in 2006. While her main goal was to earn a master's degree, she wanted to see the world before obtaining this and settling down. Lindsay decided that she wanted to travel to Japan and teach English. She applied at Koiwa, which was Tokyo's branch of Nova Language School, who were at the time Japan's largest private English conversation school. She was successful and travelled to Japan, where she began her teachings in October 2006. Lindsay would share her accommodation with two other women, who were both foreign teachers themselves. She would keep in daily touch with her family and boyfriend by phone, email and video calls through Skype. While they were naturally worried that Lindsay was far from home, they were assured by her daily updates and could see that she was doing well and that she was very much enjoying her time in Japan. Sadly, this would all change by March 2007. At around midnight on the 20th of March 2007, Lindsay was travelling home, where she was approached by a man who tried to strike a conversation with her. They were on the Tozai Line train at the time. The man insisted that Lindsay was his English teacher, but Lindsay had no recollection of the man. Unsure of what to do, Lindsay remained polite, as she knew that once she got off the train, she would be able to ride home and hopefully end this uncomfortable encounter. Except when she got on a bike and rode home, the man ran after her, all the way to where she lived. When he caught up with Lindsay, he asked if he could come inside for a glass of water, as he was thirsty from all the running. Knowing that her roommates were inside, Lindsay agreed, as she hoped that if the man knew she wasn't alone, he wouldn't do anything to her. Not only this, but her roommates would also know of this man's existence. The pair went inside and Lindsay made the man a glass of water. As he drank this, he asked Lindsay if she would be prepared to provide him with private English lessons. He said that he could pay 3,500 yen, which would be around £24, paid to Lindsay at the end of each lesson. Lindsay considered this offer and eventually agreed to this. The man then drew a picture of Lindsay, where he also provided his contact details on the picture. Notably, the man's email address was whitelover at hotmail.com. After finishing his drink and drawing the picture, the man left. Lindsay examined the picture. The name that the man gave Lindsay was Tatsuya Ichiyashi. Tatsuya Ichihashi was born on the 5th of January 1979 in Gifu Prefecture. His formative years were spent both in Gifu Prefecture and Chiba Prefecture, just east of Tokyo. He came from a wealthy family. His mother was a dentist and his father was a medical doctor. Tatsuya graduated from the Department of Horticulture in Chiba University in 2005. However, he would be unable to find work. Instead, he lived off a hefty allowance his parents provided him with, which was believed to be around 100,000 yen, or around 700 pounds per month. Tatsuya was described as a loner, although he was in a year-long relationship at the time of meeting Lindsay. He also had a keen interest in fitness, regularly attending the gym and cycling up to 25 kilometers a day. He also had a keen interest in violent manga. Tatsuya had no prior convictions at the time of meeting Lindsay, although he was once accused of assaulting a woman while attempting to rob her. The case was settled out of court. 
It was rumoured that Tatsuya's father paid the victim 1 million yen in order to buy her silence. Lindsay told her boyfriend of her encounter with Tatsuya. While he was obviously concerned, she tried to reassure him that everything was fine and told him not to worry about the guy who chased her home, saying it was just crazy Japan. On the morning of the 25th of March 2007, Lindsay met with Tatsuya in a cafe where they would carry out their English lesson in the safety of public. However, at the end of the lesson, Tatsuya informed Lindsay that he unfortunately left his money at his apartment and as such was unable to pay her. He assured Lindsay that he would be able to pay her, but she would need to come with him to his apartment to collect the money. She agreed and the pair caught a taxi to Tatsuya's home. Lindsay asked the taxi driver to wait for her while she went inside to collect the money. Seven minutes went by before the cab driver decided to take another job and left the area. Lindsay was supposed to give lessons later that day but failed to show up. After she failed to show up for further scheduled lessons the following day, the Nova Language School reported her missing to the police. They also contacted Lindsay's father, Bill, to inform him of her absence. Police visited Lindsay's accommodation where they spoke to her roommates, who confirmed that Lindsay hadn't been home since the day of meeting Tatsuya. Police investigated Lindsay's room, where they discovered the picture that Tatsuya drew for her. Knowing this, nine officers were sent to Tatsuya's fourth floor apartment to question him over the whereabouts of Lindsay. Two officers went to the home, while the remaining seven waited on the ground. There was one issue. As the Japanese police had no ground for probable cause, they were unable to knock on Tatsuya's door. However, Tatsuya would leave his apartment, running into the police on his way out. They spoke briefly, with the police explaining that they were searching for Lindsay. Without warning, he pushed through the two officers and attempted to escape. One of the officers would grab the bag he was wearing at the time, but he managed to slip out of it and successfully escape the pair, barefooted. For whatever reason, the officers didn't have radios to contact the waiting police downstairs, leaving them unaware as to what had happened. Now they had probable cause. Police entered Tatsuya's home. They found he had moved his bathtub from his bathroom to his balcony. This in itself isn't strange, as it's common for bathtubs in Japan to be detachable, so they can be moved to other rooms to clean or to relax elsewhere. However, as they approached the bathtub, they noticed it had been filled with sand and compost soil. There was also a hand sticking outside the mixture. Police found Lindsay's naked body buried inside the compost soil and sand mix. She was bound and gagged, and her hair had been completely shaved off. Lindsay's personal belongings and clothes were also found all over the apartment. Neighbours had told police that they heard sounds of something striking metal and dragging sounds in between Sunday night and Monday morning. Police later learned that after the murder took place, Tatsuya made six trips to a local store to buy the compost soil and sand mixture to bury Lindsay in. It was sprayed with a substance used to compact and decompose waste. It was believed that he was planning to either bury her body in concrete, or wait until it had decomposed. Police also believed that Tatsuya shaved Lindsay's hair due to it being tougher to decompose. Police notified Lindsay's family back in England. Her father Bill and her boyfriend Ryan Garside would fly to Tokyo on the 27th of March to identify Lindsay's body. An autopsy showed bruises on Lindsay's upper body, suggesting that she had been subjected to a prolonged attack. There were also bruises on the left side of her face which were egg-sized, indicating that she was hit with a fist. The bruises on her upper body were determined to be a result of colliding with furniture. There were also signs that Lindsay had been sexually assaulted throughout her ordeal which lasted several hours. Finally, they determined her death to have been caused when Tatsuya had begun strangling Lindsay, resulting in a cartilage being broken in her neck. Knowing all this, there was one thing police needed to know. Where was Tatsuya Ichihashi? After escaping the police at his home, Tatsuya hid in bushes nearby until the police presence died down. Once things had quietened down, he stole a bike and rode it until eventually dumping it. He then caught a train to Ueno Station. 
police were criticised for their inability to catch Tatsuya early on. They were poorly positioned, allowing a blind spot to be created for Tatsuya to escape without being seen by the police on the ground floor, as well as not having the means for the officers on the fourth floor to communicate to the other police on ground. Additionally, it was believed that had they brought in sniffer dogs, they would have been able to track down Tatsuya as he was hiding nearby. By now, Ichihashi was on the nationwide wanted list for suspicion of abandoning a body. His face was on posters all across Japan. Police had even issued wanted posters with Tatsuya's face photoshopped on various wigs, believing he may be wearing them in order to conceal his identity. Lindsay's family had tried to keep the media attention focused on bringing Tatsuya to justice. Police had also made unsuccessful raids at a hotel shortly after Tatsuya had gone on the run. Knowing he was now a wanted man all over Japan, Tatsuya purchased a sewing kit from a convenience store and proceeded to pierce his nose in order to alter his appearance. He then walked from Weno to Akihabara. He also tried to cut off part of his lower lip twice to make his lips appear thinner. He was unsuccessful the first time due to the immense pain, but was able to a few days later in a public bathroom. He was able to hide the wounds by wearing several layers of surgical masks, which is commonplace in Japan. After taking irregular trains and walking through multiple prefectures, he decided to head north towards Niigata and Aomori. It wouldn't be long after that he would run out of money. After a week of sleeping rough in Aomori, Tatsuya decided to head to Osaka to look for work, but changed his mind and eventually left for Shikoku. Once there, he thought that if he were to visit all of Shikoku's 88 temples, this might bring Lindsay back to life. He would abandon his plan. Later, Tatsuya read in a library of an uninhabited island in Okinawa and decided that this would be the ideal place to escape to. In May, he took a ferry from Kagoshima Prefecture and made his way to Ohajima Island. There, he read books such as Catcher in the Rye. He also listened to radio broadcasts for any police updates on the ongoing investigation. Tatsuya struggled to find food. He wasn't successful when attempting to catch fish and became malnourished. Eventually, he stowed away on a ferry back to Okinawa. A guard had stopped him during his attempt but he was able to talk his way into being let go after telling the guard his family disowned him and that he had no money. After walking past a police station, he noticed that the wanted photos of him had been updated to highlight the two moles he had on his left cheek. After seeing this, Tatsuya decided to slice these off. Over the next few months, he worked various construction jobs in Okinawa and Osaka. Each time he would use a different alias. He was able to save the money he was making as he was living in free accommodation provided by his employers. After saving roughly 1 million yen, Tatsuya decided that he would spend much of this on plastic surgery in order to alter his appearance further. He would pay for several procedures. One was to extend the length and narrow his nose. Another was to widen the folds of his eyes, giving him a more western appearance, while the last was to raise the bridge of his nose. However, it was his last visit that would prove to be his downfall. Staff had noticed while reviewing the before and after photos that Tatsuya had scars on his left cheek, which they found strange at the time. Of course, these were the result of the moles he had removed himself. The clinic decided to send the photos to police, who had then released this to the media, along with the updated photos. By this time, there was a reward of 10 million yen for the capture of Tatsuya Ichihashi, although this would be increased to 100 million yen. This was equivalent to just under 700,000 pounds. Upon seeing this, Tatsuya was in shock. He panicked and packed his belongings, collected his salary, and planned to flee by ferry. He cut his hair and even bought a party disguise in a desperate attempt to conceal his identity. However, on the 10th of November 2009, two and a half years after his initial escape, Tatsuya Ichihashi was stopped by police at the ferry terminal in Osaka. When the officer asked for his name, 
he simply replied, I am Ichihashi. The hunt was now over. Initially, Tatsuya Ichihashi didn't confess to his crimes, and it would be until the 2nd of December, 23 days after his arrest, the police would charge him with abandoning a body, as well as for the rape and murder of Lindsay Hawker. He would eventually admit to killing her, but he would say that it wasn't intentional. Tatsuya said he had suffocated Lindsay while trying to prevent her from screaming while he raped her. This case was covered extensively by media, as the death penalty was on the table in this particular case. However, it was very unlikely this would happen, as it's rare in Japan for the death penalty to be handed down in instances where only one person has been killed. Although the family had also requested the death penalty, on the 21st of July 2011, Tatsuya Ichihashi was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment. The courts eventually went with this decision, as they felt the death penalty was inappropriate due to Tatsuya having no previous convictions, as well as there being a chance of rehabilitation due to his age. He was 32 at the time. While in prison, Tatsuya Ichihashi wrote a book titled Until I Was Arrested, which explained his side of the story. He offered the Hawker family all the royalties the book may earn, but they understandably declined. The book would later go on to be made into a film called I Am Ichihashi, which was released in 2013 and starred Japanese actor Dean Fujioka. The film was based on the book, as well as covering the two and a half years that he was on the run before his eventual arrest. Despite the shocking nature of this case, Japan has an extremely low crime rate. While Britain, France and Germany recorded around 800 murders in 2017, Japan, in contrast, only recorded 307. Furthermore, per 100,000 citizens, homicide rates are only 0.2 in Japan, compared to 1.2 in Britain, 1.0 in Germany, 1.3 in France, and 5.3 in the United States. Nevertheless, it's always important to ensure your own safety. Worrying about potentially upsetting someone should never take priority over protecting yourself. Tatsuya Ichihashi was also no expert at hiding. Those who were involved with the investigation have said that his evasion from police was mainly down to sheer luck. But I'd like to know what you think of this case. Please leave a comment below telling me your thoughts. If you'd like me to cover other cases like this, please let me know. I also want to thank you for watching the video, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Until next time, take care, and goodbye. For now.